All right, hello everybody and welcome to this A plus 1101 practice quiz where I am going to help prepare you to take and pass that A plus call one exam with flying colors. We're going to get straight into it today with our first performance based question. Okay, so the question reads, you work for an under-resourced company and as a result, it is up to you to solve all physical troubleshooting issues for the day. Larry from sales has attempted some base level troubleshooting and attached the information he has gathered under the confirmed section below. Look at the issue on the far left, use the information in the confirmed section to rule out potential causes, select the most likely cause and select the most appropriate solution for the issue. Let's take a look at what Larry gave us to work with. So on the left, we have a black screen issue and it has been confirmed by Larry that all cabling is properly connected and additionally that the brightness and contrast are set correctly. The next issue is a bootable device not found. It has been confirmed by Larry that all cables are connected and a new USB has been plugged in. So you'll have to choose from the options down below in the gray, which is the most likely cause of that issue, uh, of that yeah, issue based on what we have been given to choose from. And then we'll have to choose a purple option based on what the best solution would be to solve that issue. So pause the video now and make a genuine attempt to do this yourself. I'm going to be showing you the answer in a couple of seconds. Pause the video. Three, two, one. Okay, here is your answer. So the issue for the black screen is incorrect input selected. The issue for the solution is to simply, sorry, the solution for that issue is to simply change the input option. And then for our bootable device not found issue, the correct issue causing that issue <laughs> is an incorrect boot order. And the solution to that is to change the boot order in the BIOS. Okay, now, Hopefully we should have been able to reason our way there based on the information we have been given. The information here in combination with the options we had to choose from quite clearly pointed to these issues and solutions being the correct one. So if you didn't get that right, you will need to revise symptoms of common issues and go over exam objective five, pretty much all of it. Right, the troubleshooting stuff is something you're really going to need for your exam. And more specifically, you'll need to know the symptoms of common causes and how to tell based on given symptoms what is happening. All right, so with that being said, we will move on to our first multiple choice question from exam objective one. Let's get straight into it. The question reads, you have just received an email explaining that your company has decided they will be using MFA we should know what that is for access to the company's network drive. The MFA requires the use of a pin code and biometrics. Which of the following is an example of a biometric? A. Geolocation. B. Scanning your fingerprint. C. Writing your signature. Or D. Entering a password. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to figure out what the answer to that could be. Pause the video and have a think if you need to. Showing you the answer in three, two, one. The answer is scanning your fingerprint. So guys, this question was essentially asking you about um, biometrics. So biometric is anything that you are, anything that is biologically a part of you. That could be your uh, eye scan, it could be your fingerprint. Anything that is a physical part of your body and you're using that to identify yourself. Biometrics, it is in the name, anything you are. Okay, here is some more information on the incorrect answers, which you'll need to know as well for your exam. So feel free to pause and read that if you need to. But we will be moving on to the second multiple choice question in just a moment, guys. But for those of you that are here, here is a special um, code that will get you 50% off my learning guide. If you watch this video, uh, you're, you're lucky. And this is only valid for the next 24 hours from when this video was released. So head over to journeyscyber.com. Use this code. It is going to work on my learning guide for the next 24 hours from the date of release of this video. I am going to pass, which I'm sure you will. I believe in you. Okay, guys, we'll move on to question number two from exam objective two. It reads, a homeowner is setting up their wireless network and wants to understand the differences between the 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz frequency bands for optimal performance. Which of the following options accurately highlights the distinctions between these two frequency bands? A, 
The 2.4 GHz band offers better range, but is more prone to interference from baby monitors and other similar devices. The 5 GHz frequency has more channels and higher speeds, however it has less range. B. The 2.4 GHz band provides more channels and higher speeds, but is more prone to interference from baby monitors and other similar devices. The 5 GHz frequency offers better range and has less interference. C. The 2.4 GHz band offers better range and higher speeds, but is immune to interference from other wireless devices. The 5 GHz frequency has fewer channels and lower speeds, with more interference. Or D. The 2.4 GHz band offers greater range and higher speeds, but is immune to interference from other wireless networks. The 5 GHz frequency has more channels and less range. A lot to take in there, guys. Pause the video, have another read over it. I know the second one is kind of cut off there. Sorry about that. That's my fault. And I'll show you the answer in three seconds. So pause the video if you need more time. Three, two, one. The answer is A. The 2.4 GHz band offers better range, but is more prone to interference from baby monitors and other similar devices. The 5 GHz frequency has more channels and higher speeds. However, it has less range. So guys, you're going to need to know the differences between different... Uh, between these two, right? You'll need to know the pros and the cons, and you will need to be able to look at a scenario and identify which one is the better option between the two. You'll need to be able to do that. If you can't do that yet, you're not ready. So get to studying. All right, some more information there if you wanna pause and have a read. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to question number three from exam objective three. Let's take a look at what we got here. The question reads, you are assembling a laptop computer and need to select a suitable motherboard. The physical size, shape, and power connectors of the motherboard are crucial factors to consider. Which motherboard type should you choose if you're building a laptop computer system that requires a smaller form factor and is intended for use in portable devices? A. Advanced Technology Extended, or ATX. B. Standard ATX. C. Information Technology Extended, or ITX. Or D. Extended ATX, or EATX. Answer coming to you in three, pause the video if you need to, two, one. The answer is Information Technology Extended or ITX. So you're going to need to know what motherboards to use depending on the scenario you're provided with. Some motherboards are more suitable for smaller compact devices. Some motherboards are more suitable for larger, more intricate devices and you'll need to know what is more or less suitable for the other okay if you're not there yet make sure you get to study in tonight and tackle that so that when you wake up tomorrow morning fresh ready to study again you've already got that one conquered okay some more information here for you if you want to go ahead and read that it is important stuff and you will need to know it but other than that we'll move on to exam objective four let's get to it it reads in the context of cloud computing, which of the following terms refers to the process of ensuring that information is consistently updated and replicated across various data centers? Is it A, high availability, B, rapid elasticity, C, file synchronization, or D, metered utilization? The answer coming to you in three, two, one. The answer is C, file synchronization. This term involves information being synchronized across different data centers. It ensures that data remains consistent and up to date across multiple locations, enhancing data redundancy and availability. So I'll pop this up on the screen here. You're going to need to know what each of these is, right? High availability, rapid elasticity, metered utilization, and what's the one we just looked at? File synchronization. Okay, you'll need to know all of these. You need to be able to look at a scenario and note which one is the most appropriate one to use or which one is being used in that scenario. You will need to know that, okay? So you need to know about file synchronization and high availability, rapid elasticity, and metered utilization. You need to know about all of those, all right? We're going to go ahead and move on to the final question. Hope you're doing all right so far. It reads, your computer's projector is shutting down intermittently during use. What might be the likely reason for this behavior? A, the projector is overheating. B, the device has incorrect audio settings. C, the VGA cable is not properly connected. Or D, the projector is suffering from burn-in. Hmm, your answer in three, two, one. Pause the video if you need to. 
Here it is. The answer is A. The projector is overheating. Basically, guys, if you have intermittent shutdown, the most likely answer, particularly for your exam, is going to be that there is overheating occurring. Okay, you're going to need to know that. You're going to need to be able to look at a symptom, think about the most appropriate cause of that, and then how to treat that based on the information you've been given. That is it for today, everybody. Remember, overheating is intermittent shutdown. Just remember that one. Okay, so just again... Um, Oh, and even better for you, I've taken a snippet out of the learning guide here. Here's all of the troubleshooting you'll need to know in relation to this particular topic, all right? You need to know about post beeps, about proprietary crash, crash screens, about the blast screen, about having no power, sluggish performance, overheating, all this stuff, right? That question was just covering this little highlighted section about intermittent shut shutdown over here. Okay, so you need to know all of this. And here are some, again, another snippet from my learning guide. Here are some open-ended questions, research-based questions that you'll have to actually do some research on if you don't know the answer in order to find the answer, but you can use these questions to practice uh, and see kind of how you're going. You should really, to, to be ready for the exam, you should be able to answer these questions without looking at a multiple choice set of options. You should be able to just kind of know based on your experience, based on your research, what the most likely answer is there, okay? These questions are designed for you to learn about it by going through the process of learning about it. So you might read the question, get frustrated that you don't know it, and then you dig around, do all this research trying to find out, and by doing that research, you're actually learning, right? If you just see this, scroll down to the multiple choice answers and say, oh, okay, that was the one. You don't really learn as well as if you do this, okay? The learning guide does have uh, questions with answers as well, but it also has these active recall questions just to make sure you're going through that as well so that you don't fall into the trap of just relying on rote memorization because that will cause you to fail your exam, okay? So with that being said, guys, I'll see you in the next one. I'm just gonna go back to this code real quick. Just don't tell anyone, okay? Here is the code to get 50% off the learning guide for the A-plus core one exam right there if you need it. Don't tell anyone, but if you have a friend or two, I guess it's fine, right? All right. I'll see you later, guys. Make sure uh, you tune in for the next one. See you then.